girls aren't gonna be happy. I gotta take all their stuff out so we don't get wood chips all over it. Good morning, modern setters. Oh, you wanna say hi too? Say good morning. Oh, you got it rough. This morning we need to work on our, let me get the light on. That's a little bit brighter. We built our bookshelf out of these wooden crates that we painted and we antiqued. We got them all stapled up. They're nice and secure. Now we need a top for them. And this morning we're going to build that top. I'm going to go grab my tape measure and we've got to take a measurement and see how long and how wide the board is. What are you doing? You were gonna instigate trouble? Ah, there should be a tape measure in here somewhere. There we go. Let's see how wide the board is we're gonna be using. It is nine and three quarters, nine and seven eighths wide. Yeah, all right, it's the same all the way around. We're gonna have half an inch to three eighths of an inch overhang. What that tells me is I wanna match the side reveal with the front overhang. So whatever we have on the front, I wanna have on each side. So now I can get my length and cut it down and then we can get the finish on it. So 61 and a sixteenth long. So I want to go sixty-two and a sixteenth long. Do you like the bookshelf? Yeah, you. Do you like it? We'll surprise Gina with her top being on her bookshelf tonight. We're going to need our 12 inch wide square. I think it's right here. Pencil. this for another project. Let's take this one down here and we'll get it prepped for our clear coat. I'll tell you what, I've really been enjoying my new tools. I don't think you really have to get any certain brand, but if you'd want to, the DeWalt have been great. I just wish I would have had all these tools when I was building our outdoor kitchen last spring. I would have made the project a lot easier. But that's all right. We've got them now. Now we can build some fun projects with them. If you haven't seen the videos of us building our outdoor kitchen, I'll put a link to that series right here. Once the
the weather gets a little bit nicer, I plan on building a few more $30 chicken coops that we can build in 30 minutes. And that's what these spindles are for. But they've been coming in handy to stack up the lumber up off the ground when we've been cutting it lately. So I'm glad we bought them early. Man, that was noisy. Alright, I'm going to need my DeWalt sander. Stick that here for a minute. See what I can find for oops, sandpaper. This is our 180 grit. I think that'll work. I believe this other one is too high of a grit. That's 80 grit, yeah. Too rough. So we're going to go with our 180. These boards are rough sawn lumber with a circular saw, so they have that nice round kerf mark in them. We're going to sand them, but we don't want to remove that. What I'm looking to do is just take off the really bad burrs and leave the kerf marks. And then that way, when we got the clear coat on there, you'll still see the kerf marks, but you, they, it'll be smooth. We have 80 grit on there. We don't want that. Let's put some 180 on there. That's it, it's that quick and simple. I just want to stand it up now and sand each edge a little bit. I don't want to sand this edge too much because I want to keep that color. Nice, it kept some of the color and removed a little bit. So that gives it a nice patina look. I'm gonna do the bottom just so it's clean. Now I'm torn on what side to use. Man! At first I was gonna have this be the bottom side, but I don't know, and I think I like all the color variation in it. Where this side is just more plain. I don't want plain, so we'll plan on this being the top. Now I just gotta figure out that edge is kinda of boring. This edge has got more color and patina to it. So we'll do top front lip. That'll look cool. Yeah, that'll look nice. Now I'm gonna take a piece of 180 sandpaper in my hand and just quickly hit all the corners and this will take off the sharp edges couple of reasons that way you don't hurt yourself on them the biggest reason is if you leave that sharp square edge on there the finish won't stick as nice and the finish is going to chip off a lot easier I'm gonna take a small rag and just lightly wipe it down trying to get off as much dust as I can See, got our roller. We got our polyurethane. Tell you what, we've gotten a lot of use out of this kitchen table. We used to eat off of it, and now we can build some projects on it. Let's move the whole work table closer to the wood stove. 
This way our clear coat will dry faster and we can get the whole project done quicker. Now it looks white, but it will go on and dry clear. I like putting it on thick because it's rough sawn lumber, so it's not smooth. There is definitely some gaps and crevices to fill, so the thicker I put it on, the less coats I'll have to do. Alright, we're going to let this dry, and then we'll come back to it, we'll sand it down, and we'll put another coat on it. Store everything in a Ziploc bag for now, and that way it doesn't dry out on us. Now that the first coat of polyurethane is dry, I'm going to take a piece of 180 sandpaper, 220 grit if I had it. I'm going to lightly scuff it all. I want to make sure I get the brush marks out, any dust out, just any imperfections is what I'm trying to sand out at this point. I'm all done giving it my first sand. I just like to run my hand across it. If I feel any rough spots, give it a quick sand down again. If there's any runs or bubbles, now is a great time to sand them out. When you're happy with it, I grab my rag and just give it a light dusting. Now it's time to apply our second coat of finish. It's looking nice. I'm very happy with the way it's drying and how it looks. I like the different color variations on it. Being the second coat, it's going to go on a lot smoother and with a lot less finish this time. I'm looking forward to having the top on there and surprising Gina with it tonight. That's going to be fun. Alright, we're going to let this dry again and then we'll sand it down. Now once my second coat's finished, I'm going to give it another sanding. I'm looking to get all the brush marks out and all the imperfections. Now it's very it's important at this step to make sure I get all the dust off. We're gonna be putting on our last coat of clear and we're gonna be spraying this coat on so that way there's no brush marks or anything that's gonna look more like a clear coat of a car finish. I'm gonna use a matte finish clear coat. Alright, now the top is completely dry. I'm going to grab some clamps and we'll get it clamped onto our bookshelf and then I'll screw it in place. But that came out nice. I like the different color variation. It'll be interesting to see how that looks on top of the bookshelf. I'll have to clamp it down in place. And then we can we'll pre-drill through the pine of the crates and get it to go up through. That way it'll suck down the top and hold it the way we want it to. Yeah. The girls aren't going to be happy. i got to take all their stuff out so we don't get wood chips all over it. They'll have to reorganize the area.
reverse clamp on it. I like that. That looks cool. Color contrasts. The top's different than the walls. It just stands out nicely. Gina should be happy with that. Well, I hope Gina likes it. She'll have to put her books back in place. Gotta wait till she comes home from work now. Fingers crossed, she should like it. If you're new to our channel or if you're not already subscribed, now is a great opportunity for you to do that. Subscribe to the channel and while you're down there, ring the bell and that'll turn on notifications. Maybe, maybe not. YouTube will let you know when we upload a video, go live or post something to the community tab. The best way to stay up to date with Lumna Acres is remember we post a video every day at 6 a.m and go on over to our website. I'll put a link to that right here and sign up for our newsletter. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.